Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. We are back with our, I usually would say, our monthly recap of everything entertainment. But as it is June, and we missed May due to the fact that I decided that I wanted to go back to Ontario and cover an election, Michael has graciously accepted the role to come on on the 1st of June, that's right, June 1st, to talk about the biggest entertainment news in the last 30 days, all of month, all of May, sorry. Michael Nichols Pate, our executive producer, our entertainment rundown aficionado. How are you doing this fine June 1st? Well, June is busting out all over. So we are quite happy pride. Happy pride. This entire month, anything that slightly inconveniences me is homophobic and therefore not allowed. So I can only be convenienced. No inconvenience is allowed, period. Exactly. Exactly. But how are you? How's life been? How's, how was the show? How was the flop that it was heard around the world? Busy, 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 because I had at the beginning of the month, Susical, and yep. then immediately went into, instead of just being a part of it, like into executive director mode for Bunbury's Cabaret that we had, and I've been dealing with that all month, and putting out fires, and dealing with people that don't know how to be grown adults, and all that good stuff. Um, Hopefully it was fun. It ended up going episode. well. <laughs> no. I mean, if they do, they know. I told them, act like a grown adult. I listen, oh. no shade. I fully call people after seeing fights and things and being like, you can't do that and yeah. have them go, oops. It's so, the way the world works, though. <laughs> it's the journey that we're on, the never ending story. Um, but uh, yeah, it went really well. If you want to see it, it is on YouTube. Um, if you we will link it in, in the show notes. It's a flop, Bunbury Players, or check the show notes. It will be there. I I was going to say this is my timestamp if you want to hear me sing, but I, I'm towards that back half of the show. Hour and 10 minutes in. Is it really an hour and 10 in? Yep. Look at you coming with this timestamp. I'm glad that somebody paid attention because I certainly did not. Oh, I did not watch the entire thing. I just scrolled until I found you. I was like, oh, there he is. <laughs> you didn't want to watch my husband? Oh, I watched your husband. He's like, I know that gentleman. Oh, it's Jonathan. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> yep. so, um, I, I did. Well, actually, Michael's in twice. He has a solo and then he does a du uh, quartet, or I guess you can call it a quartet with three other people, Jonathan, his husband, and then two women. Uh, I do not know the song, but... Nine people's favorite things from title of show. There you go. So... It's, it went well. I mean, the recording, um, I would say if you want to skip nine people's favorite things, you can, because halfway through the song at one point, I went to go hit a note and totally choked on <laughs> saliva and it went, Ugh! and I just stood there and smiled on stage because I'm like, fuck. And we weren't supposed to use that recording, but surprise, we used that one and I don't know why, so. Because they want to make you just look human, okay? Some of those notes no. that you hit in the, uh, the uh, Queen of... Pirate Queen. Pirate Queen were quite uh, interesting. And your dramatic flair. Interesting. Girl, interesting. You have the, you have the Inter They were interestingly gorgeous, rude. Actually, I wish that it was Sundays instead of, or Saturdays instead of Sunday's performance for Pirate Queen also. I think it was a little bit better. Um, all my notes were in tune. I just think it was a better performance on Saturday night. As someone who's never seen the show, I was I found it quite uh, amusing when you started to walk away from the microphone. I was like, oh, it's done. Like, this is the point in time when I start clapping. And you were like, no, I'm back. I'm here. And I'm going to sing more. And I'm like, okay. I, got, I didn't have direction. So I'm like, let me just do something dramatic. It was. It was a choice. <laughs> it was and, a choice I made. And, and then I did it. And as I was doing it in my head, I'm like, Oh, this is not a good choice. Well, I guess we're just going to commit. <laughs> I literally was like, what do I do here? Because there's like eight measures of music. And I'm like, I, what do I do? I can't awkwardly stand there and smile. I'm like, maybe if I walk away and like open my coat up and then like make it look like I'm going to leave. And then, no, I have more to It was a choice. I am not one I agree with. And we're going to take a quick break here right now because there's someone calling that I need to take. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. 
We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite. Be sure to hit that subscribe button today to be kept in the loop of all the great episodes that are coming up on the show. Also, click on the links in the show notes and follow our social media pages as well. Wow, that was a great commercial break. You should head over to all of our social media pages and subscribe because it helps us. It helps the algorithms. It helps us beat Elon Musk in the world of Elon Musk attacking Twitter. Does <laughs> um, it? How yeah. does the algorithm work? Please explain it to me in detail. Well, there's a, there's a chimpanzee. There's about 90 of them in a room and they're hitting buttons on a computer and that's how they do it. You know what? That makes sense for how the social media system happens. It's like a bunch of chimpanzees in a room and whatever profile they click on that day that's the one that's going to be shown exactly thank you see see we've just solved the algorithm you're all welcome um we were we before the uh abrupt uh commercial break there we were talking about bunbury players and how you were amazing in it like i said there's the logo as i said Head over, actually, if you're listening to this on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, scroll down, scroll down. Actually, you know what we can do now? We can, auto, we can just input a segment during the commercial break and it won't even be a commercial break. It'll be just you singing your song from uh, <laughs> uh, whatever, Pirate Queen. <laughs> yeah, that's an option. No, no, no. Go give the views to the video. Remember, algorithm. We gotta get, we gotta get more views on that there you go. video. There you go. So head over. We'll, we'll, we won't link it, but we'll be linked in the show notes. But it won't be here. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't be. I'm gonna fight him. We're fighting. <laughs> the girls are fighting. The girls are fighting. It's ten minutes into it already. Okay, we need to, we need to behave. Um, the <laughs> biggest edge. I don't fucking know. <laughs> us no exactly let's talk about the biggest entertainment news in all of the world right now and that is mr johnny depp and amanda heard or emily heard amanda amber amber (laughs) you don't even know her name that just goes to show which side chris is on (laughs) um Amber Heard and Johnny Depp's trial that's been going on closed last week while I was in Ontario. Uh, What's your initial thoughts on this? Probably from someone who did not give one iota of licks to this uh, uh, trial. I barely paid attention. I mean, you didn't even have to watch it to know what was going on because it was literally all anybody could talk about on Facebook, on the TikToks, on the Twitters, on the Instagram, on all these things. It was just this trial. Um, I think that whoever Amber Heard hired for her lawyer is an idiot. Um, (laughs) She fucked herself so hard with that lawyer. Um, I am not the biggest, like, fan of Johnny Depp as a person. Um, And I think that this whole trial was a bit of a media circus, and it did not need to be. But I mean, I think Johnny Depp's going to win. Amber Heard did not, her lawyers did not do their job. and. They did not make a strong enough case for her side at all. Um, I would agree wholeheartedly. And now Johnny Depp is planning a comeback. It's a rumored comeback with Beetlejuice 2. Yes, and Sherlock Holmes 3 with Robert Downey Jr. Also that one? We did is Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Yes, that is an amazing movie series. Wow. Wow. Entertainment pundit hates Robert Downey Jr. I get it. I get it. That's not what I said. Hates Jude Law. I get it. I get it. That's definitely not what I said. (laughs) Hates Guy Ritchie. I hear I get it. I get it. Who? Guy Ritchie. Who? So I, I had an interesting conversation with my father when I was back in Ontario, and he asked the question, and I we kind of played back and forth, and I want to hear from you. Johnny, this is the third time Amber Heard and Johnny Depp have been in front of the court. They were in front of the courts in Australia, in uh, England, and now they're in Australia, in America. 
Johnny Depp's been basically let go by every organization besides Dior. Because I don't know, you want to smell like a drunk person, you go with Dior. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, I went for Dior. I went there. I came back. I've got the pictures to show. Is Johnny Depp, because when you get accused of being a abuser, it sticks in the world of social media. And yeah. it's hard to change that narrative. Is this Johnny Depp just saying, fuck it, I'm already down. I'm just going to go out. If I lose, I lose. If I win, that's great. But I'm going to go out. I was going to say kicking and punching, but that's not the appropriate words I want to use during this segment. So is this him just trying to get his name back in some sense and giving, because let's be honest, and I'll say this right here, right now. They both fucked up. They both abused each other. And that's my opinion on it. And if you want to come for me, come for me, go for it. I'll file it in the appropriate locations. But is this just Johnny Depp saying, you know what? I'm going to try and take my name back and out of drag, not be dragged through the mud. I mean, even when the accusations came out, people were already saying it wasn't him right from the jump i mean people really? were very much oh yeah people were refusing to believe johnny depp had any kind of involvement and i mean i know people that have worked on movie sets with him he's not a great person to work for he he's drunk I, yeah but i just i think that this whole like the, of doing the trial specifically in america it i mean because he's he won in Australia. He won in Britain. Oh, did now he? Now in America. I believe so, if I'm remembering correctly. I thought Amber won in Australia, and that's why. He oh, was... did she win in Australia? She, he, she won one, and that's what this is basically the, like the, <clears throat> fuck you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like at this point, it is very much like a, I'm going to go and clear my name, or I'm going to get continue to get the public on my side. I think that the fact that she really kind of got to keep her stuff and he lost everything that's not great and i'm not sitting here i'm not sitting here and saying amber heard deserves like to keep i'm i don't even know what i'm saying i just i'm, I'm not, just saying I'm that i'm amber. not looking forward to seeing her in aquaman 2 no I, i'm not i'm probably won't see aquaman 2 um, i i don't even remember her before aquaman so that's just she did this she wasn't and before Aquaman. Yeah, that's what I thought. But, I, I mean... It's a weird situation at this that point, the whole thing yeah. is in. And really, at the end of the day, this is where I came in. Does this, does this trial affect anyone besides Johnny Depp and Amber Heard at the end of the day? It affects... If Johnny Depp wins, it affects him. But it doesn't if affect, Amber like, Heard, you and me. No. But if Amber Heard wins... It still doesn't affect you and me. It, it just doesn't means, affect anybody. No, exactly. But we're like treating this like the o the Michael Jackson OJ trial, right? Like, oh my God, it's a celebrity on trial and they're like live streaming it. And dear God. It's, it's, like, it's just a media circus. And it's like person after person after person fighting for like little sound quip and sound bite. And like, like the TMZ guy that got up there and they asked him like, aren't you just here for your 15 minutes of fame? And he was like, well, aren't you asking for your 15 minutes of fame, Amber Heard's lawyer? And it's like, and then the whole uh, courtroom went, oh, oh, like it's all that. It's like, it's so overly dramatized by being live streamed. I think they should not have live streamed it and it would have been probably a better, a more true kind of, I think at this point, if they don't rule in favor of Johnny Depp, it'll be shocking. Yeah. I just wish that like Judge Judy was the judge during this because I feel like if you're live streaming it, you need a popular judge. Um, so the we do not know the statements unless they're going to come out like literally uh, the the verdict I should say unless they come out after or like literally as we are airing this on June first. But I don't expect that. I think it's going to be a few days, a few weeks until we actually hear something from them. So um, yeah. we will keep you in the loop and we'll talk about it when it actually comes down and what it means and all that fun stuff. Heading over, 
now, now that we're done the biggest news story of the sort of entertainment world, and this month was kind of a dud for entertainment because the only things that were happening was the Johnny Depp because it took up so much of the atmosphere. So when Michael and I were trying to figure out what we were going to talk about, we literally had to go, want to talk about this? Sure, let's talk about it for five minutes. And I want to start with back way back when, and that is the Met Gala. Oh, yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If you don't remember, in May, the Met Gala did happen after a few months of not having it, or last year in September when they had it. Was it September or October? It was September. Because of the pandemic, they had to push it to September. But it is back in its rightful spot the first Monday in May. Yeah. So they had it the first Monday of May. I did not watch it live, I will be honest. I haven't finished watching it. I watched some of the dresses and I was like, I don't see the appeal on this one. I, I'm going to be so real. I haven't finished it because Gilded Age wear. Like the Gilded Age was a very specific time period. Yeah. And like, I'm sorry, I don't care how gorgeous Kim Kardashian looked in that Marilyn. But that was not Gilded Age. When Marilyn wore that happy birthday, Mr. President dress, was not fucking Gilded Age. That was like the fucking 60s. Yep. Like, that's not the fucking Gilded Age. If you want to know what the Gilded Age, on HBO Max, there's a wonderful television program, Gilded Age. Um, that Those costumes are Gilded Age. Like, that's what we should have seen. I will say Blake Lively, she delivered something that was akin to Gilded Age. I'm going to ask this, because sure. it was a very niche topic. It was a very niche uh, theme. <laughs> are, we, are, are we gonna see like in 2023 are we gonna see america's june 23rd 2020 look like it just seemed like the gilded age was so like pinpointed that it just didn't let a lot of people experiment and when they did they got the assignment wrong i just think it was people being lazy i mean all the men that showed up in black suit with a black tie. I'm so sick of seeing James Corden the seventh time show up to a fucking event like this where you're supposed to be over the top in a black suit and a black fucking tie. Sarah Jessica Parker, I do not like her as an actress, but she said it fucking best. She said, it is the Met Gala. You need to show the fuck up and be going over the top because it's the Met Gala. It is like the pinnacle of avant-garde fashion. And even if you don't like what she's wearing, she always fucking delivers something over the top and dramatic, which is what it should be. The Gilded Age was a good theme, a very good theme. It was that people said, fuck it, I don't care. And that's where I had an issue. I, um, sure. Um, I get again, if you listen to our last Met Gala conversation, Chris Brown does not know much about actual fashion. So I'm going to leave that one up to the good old Michael Nichols Pete on to talk about that. I want to talk about the, the elephant in the room. And you mentioned him recently, and that is James Corden. Next year at this time, he is off our TV screens. He is leaving. He is done. I don't know what he's doing, but how happy are you? Uh, he's going to be in the Wicked movie. No. Uh, both of them. Yeah. No. He's being rumored to be Dr. Dillman, the goat man. No. He's executive producing it. I'm, I'm just, listen, he's leaving for a specific reason. You don't leave up a, you don't leave a consistent paycheck unless you have something booked. And with him, it's either movies or he has a Broadway show booked. No. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Which I'm going to be real. I hope it's movies because I don't want him tainting Broadway again. But he has a Tony. I'm done. I'm never mentioning that name on this show. Ever listen, again. listen, listen. I really liked James Corden um, as a like actor, as a performer. Um, until I didn't, when he started showing up in God fucking everything. I liked him in British, the British stuff he was doing. I liked him on Doctor Who. I thought he was great. I thought, and I, when the first, when he had his talk show, when it first came out, I was like, this is great. He's fun. And then it just was like, 
okay. Okay, this is a lot. Okay, and then he was showing up in every fucking movie musical. And it was like, dude, we don't need you there. Like, he was fine in Into the Woods in 2014 when Disney did it. He was fine. Emily Blunt was better. Now, not much about that movie was redeemable. I'm going to be very real. Um, also, I don't know starring what? in it. Uh, I will say Emily Blunt was probably, and the two kids playing Jack and Little Red Riding Hood, those were, I think, the best parts of that movie. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I just, he's oversaturated. So it, the smart thing for him to do would be to just take a step back and disappear for a while and then come back which he might be doing because he's in Wicked. He may just be disappearing so that when the Wicked movies come out, people aren't like, go fuck yourself, James Corden. <laughs> you were very far away. And then all of a sudden you said, go fuck yourself, James Corden. Like it was very close and very clear and very articulate. It's like you were trying to send a message there. Listen, anyone who listens will agree. James Corden sometimes needs to go fuck himself. Like, get off my TV screen, get off my movies. Like, he has been the wrong choice in a lot of things, and I need it to end. I agree wholeheartedly. Mohart. <laughs> um, we, again, uh, one, the next one I want to talk about here is a few notable passings a few notable passings. Uh, I want to start with Naomi Judd. Um, anyone who knows the Judds, uh, anyone who knows country music knows the Judds. Uh, anyone who knows Ashley Judd knows the Judds. Anyone who knows Wyona Judd knows the Judds. Um, this is a big loss. And when it was announced, I think it was take a lot of people were taken back by it. And a lot of outpouring of support around uh, the Judds and uh, Naomi. Uh, any favorite Judd films or if, uh, Judd music? That you, what was your opinion? What was your thoughts when you heard this? So I actually, I'm going to be very honest. I'm not a huge country music fan. I don't know too much of their music. My husband, however, loves the Judds and wanted to go see their final tour. I think the real heartbreaking thing here is when it came out that um, she was lost to mental health reasons, which they're being very dodgy about it, but it sounds like she was, uh, she was lost because she completed suicide. And that's just really heartbreaking that that happened. And I mean, she's been always very honest about her depression, her anxiety, and, and has always been a very strong advocate for mental health. Um, and it's just, it's just heartbreaking. It is. Um, the other one, the other notable passing that I want to mention is the good fella himself, Mr. Ray Liotta. Field of Dreams uh, was on location in Hawaii when he did pass away. Um, he at the age of 67. Uh, when it happened, my, my mother and I were driving in uh, Newcastle, Ontario, which is where I'm from. And I, I told my mother and she like swerved a little bit. She goes, oh, he was so young and but then she started going oh he looked like he was drinking a lot and smoking a lot so then like the 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 two seconds of oh that's so sad that he passed away then turned into well he wasn't looking that good to begin with uh, like near the end there um he died peacefully in his sleep that's what the tmz's and the news reports have been said um <laughs> I liked Ray. I liked his acting. I was one of those people that actually did enjoy Ray Liotta. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it didn't affect me as much as I thought like some others might because of everything that I'm going through right now, but I feel bad for his wife and or his fiance and his kids, and I feel bad for the Judds. Just people die. It's what it is. I mean, it's still sad. Oh, I, don't get me wrong. I, I shed a tear. Shed a tear. But, yeah. Good old Ray Liotta. Gone for but not forgotten. Um, we're going to take a quick commercial break here. Add in another one here. And then we're going to talk about Queen Elizabeth. And then we're going to talk about 
what's on top for some of the shows that have come out in the last month, some of the TV movies that we've been watching, and then we'll come back with our, the last segment is one of the biggest ones, and that is, you're not going to want to miss it. <laughs> Michael already is gonna It is be- not that goddamn Jason Derulo, where in the <laughs> hell is he? I'm not. I'm not. I'm sure anyway, we'll already. be right back in two seconds. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Okay, welcome back. Another great commercial break. Highly recommend that if you're not a Patreon subscriber, head over and hit this Patreon subscriber. Michael just gave me the look of, ugh, Patreon. We've been having issues with Patreon for Bunbury. Really? How so? Yeah, they won't give us the money (laughs) that we have on there. Awkward. I'm like, Patreon, let's fight. Let's square up in the parking lot. It must just, they just must not like Americans. Us Canadians, we get it like the day after. That's okay. At least I have HBO Max. Yeah, we have Crave. It's a lot cheaper and we get it all the same That's things. That's probably true. That's probably very true. Or Paramount Plus. Keep evil's name out of your God forsaken mouth. Keep my wife's name. How is Will Smith doing these days? Has he, um, has he's he po- definitely has, on a has PR he tour. His, is he? Yeah, no, today, today he poked his head. I saw an article today. Um, Will Smith made sure everybody on set got treated fairly and got what they were paid. Like this whole article expose about how Will Smith on King Richard like fought to make sure everyone got paid correctly. I'm like, oh, we're on the PR kick now. We have Will Smith. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're, we're, we're on this part of the show. Okay. Love that journey. So, so the 10 years is going to be five years, which is going to be two years, which is going to be, oh, look. Will no, back. it'll be five years with good behavior. I think he'll be back next year. I'm putting money on it right now. Putting money on really? it. Really? Right yep. Putting money on it right now. Right here, right what, now. For them, to make a, for them to make a joke out of it? Yep. Depends on how well they rehab his image. Yep. And they'll, they'll have some ribbon to go along with it. Everyone's about a ribbon. As I literally have a ribbon on my head, everyone's about a fucking ribbon, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, what have you been watching for the last month when you haven't been um, doing show after show after show in rehearsals? I'm so glad to have a break from it for a little while, though I already am looking at rehearsal or um, auditioning for Godspell, and I'm like, no, I don't need to do that. Um, but... I have been watching The Flight Attendant, season two. Um, I really liked it. I have to watch the finale. That's tonight's plan. Um, Which which is yesterday's plan. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Journey. June is busting out all over. Um, He watched it. It was a journey. he, He can't believe what happened in it. You should watch it if you haven't already. I mean, the show's already great. Is it? I'm going to throw it? this microphone at you. <laughs> I literally watched the first episode and I was like, no. no. Season one or two? Season one. It really, it get, I'm going to say the first episode is not amazing. It really does get good. It's if you like a good mystery, like it's a good mystery show. Is it? <laughs> it is. I guarantee you. Um, what else? Oh, I watched that Netflix Rebel Wilson movie senior year. That's a choice. I had to. I had to know what it was about. I had to watch it. It was a choice. Also, how did those two twins that caused that bitch to fall and smack her head and get in a coma for 20 years not face charges? I, I just want to know how she didn't collect a charge for that. I just want to know how it got made why it got greenlit 
why Hollywood is in this whole, hey, we're going to pretend that you're 40 and now you're actually 20. We used to do this in uh, on TV. Now we're going to bring it right to the, uh, the movie theaters and we're just going to go for the journey of we're actually going to put a 40-year-old as a 12-year-old kid. In all fairness, Rebel Wilson already acts like a child. In all fairness, Rebel Wilson had one good movie, and that's it. What movie? Bridesmaids. Oh, no, 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 no. She's a very good, serious actress. I believe it's called Rachel Getting Married. What, in Cats? No, 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 no. Uh, Rachel Getting Married. With Anne ha- Annie Hathaway? with Annie Hathaway. Great movie. She was great in it. That was Rebel Wilson, right? I think you're up creep without a paddle there, dude. Why am I think, am I just lost in the wilderness right now? You're into the woods. <laughs> into the unknown. Uh, I'm looking at the, no, it wasn't her. He has not done anything good. No, stop. I really, I really do think that there was a good Rebel Wilson movie. Okay, no, that's Oh, true. isn't it romantic? Isn't it romantic was great. Was Jojo movie. Rabbit, she was great. Oh, it's Bachelorette. That's what it's called. Not Annie getting married. Bachelorette. Okay. I, I'm gonna, I knew she I, was in a I'm wedding. Gonna, I'm going to change my statement. The only good movies that she was in was Pitch Perfect. Um, you didn't like Jojo Rabbit? I didn't like her character in it. I thought Jojo Rabbit was a great, I liked her in it. I'll give you that Cats was a choice and that The Hustle was a choice. I liked Isn't It Romantic, but I felt that that was just, as a rom-com fan, I liked how Wasn't she was. in uh, Ocean's 8 as well? Uh, if she was, I tried to forget about it. No, she wasn't. It was uh, Kate Blanchett. I thought she was one of the eight. Nope. Oh, uh-uh. well, so much I pay attention. Um, but hey, there's there's a good like <laughs> the divide is set on Rebel Wilson. So I I didn't like the movie. I was not a fan. I just oh, you did watch Senior Year. I did. How do those girls not catch charges? That's what I mean. I just Attempted didn't... murder. I did not like the movie at all. But that's, that's yeah. Um, movies, uh, TV shows, anything fun and exciting? Oh, watching? Stranger Things. Stranger Things season four. Ooh, I, I heard geez. it's a choice because of everything that went on with Texas in the last few weeks. So, uh, yeah, for the first episode or two, but I mean, in all fairness, they did film it like way before what happened with Texas, but. So anyone who doesn't remember, anyone who's been living under a fucking rock for the last uh, two weeks, uh, mass murder happened in a school in Texas where there were, uh, at, at the last count that I know, 10 students ages under 10 died from yeah. gunshot wounds from a asshole. I shall not name his name, but an asshole decided to, who decided to fucking shoot up a school. And yeah. Um, but after that, uh, Stranger Things on Netflix season four put on disclaimers at the beginning of the episodes that this could trigger some, uh, was it triggering? I, I mean- what, I what, Did you remember what the actual disclaimer said? I just know that there was this disclaimer. I didn't actually- It was I, like I, in light of Texas, you know, this was filmed. Oh, okay. Months and months ago, we also understand that this may be triggering and that you may want to um, refrain from watching it at this current time just be, or seek help or all that kind of stuff. They put it at the beginning of the first episode. I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 I really liked it and it was a very quick little part of it. It was definitely the 
theme of the first two episodes. And you could tell they were trying to go for a carry reference. And so, I mean, they literally to the point where instead of blood, they like dumped soda on Millie Bobby Brown's head. I've never seen Stranger Things past season one. I've never been a fan. I gave it some. Really? Just wasn't. I will say the writing's going down. The writing has been going down. The it's first season was this great season. writing. No, there's apparently, I thought so too, that it was only going to be four seasons, but they got a fifth season. So we have the two, volume two, uh, the two episodes, one of which is two hours. Uh, episode eight is two hours. Episode nine is two hours and 40 minutes long. So we have two movies that they're calling episodes. Um, yeah, I know. I'm like, this is a lot. I was like, okay, how are they going to wrap everything up in four hours and 40 minutes. I'm like, oh, okay, that's five episodes. Um, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, they have a fifth season. I'm like, okay, there's enough loose plot holes that need to be solved. But that's the fifth is the, they're done. Right. And then they're doing the spinoff. It's very popular, Chris. Just because it's popular doesn't mean that I have to watch it. I'm sure, no, absolutely true. Absolutely true. My husband does not like it. I, he, this is why you're watching it. Weekend, I, I was watching it. Movies. This is, I mean, he was forced to watch it because I was watching it and he was cackling at some points because it was funny for him. But I mean, this season, it, it's jumping the shark a little bit and everybody has plot armor. And I mean, Millie Bobby Brown even said it herself that the Duffer brothers don't like to kill anybody off. And that's why. She, what did she call them? She called them sensitive sallies because they won't kill anybody off. And there's a, it's an ensemble cast and the ensemble keeps growing every season. And it's getting to the point where it's like, okay, there's, they had to sideline some characters this season. Millie Bobby Brown, one of being one of them. Uh, Jonathan, Mike, and Will, four of the characters basically had to get sidelined. Isn't one of them gay? The, is children? Like, yeah, one like one of the boys is like alluded to having homosexual tendencies. We think. How you doing? We think. <laughs> Happy Pride Month <laughs> on Street. Happy <laughs> Pride Month. Um, it's alluded, like heavily alluded. And then um You think Netflix would there is a there is a lesbian off? character. What? You think they would just rip that band-aid off? Is that Barb? No, um, her name, it's Maya Hawke's character. Um, oh my God, there's so many damn characters on this show. Amber, maybe, actually? Does Eleven no. have a name now? It's, they call her Elle, but then when she's undercover, she's Jane. I know, it's a choice. Any hoobie doobie. <laughs> Any hoobie doobie. Um... What else have you been watching? Because I want to talk about what I've been watching because I've actually been I've actually been watching things. It's like a weird thing for me. I'm actually watching things. <laughs> I watched RuPaul. Yeah, we'll talk about that in the last segment because we want to talk about the Queen and RuPaul at the same time. Sure. Both have been way too both have been way too long and need to be done and need to be over with. <laughs> God wow. save the queen. Well, what have you been watching? I have been watching uh, The First Wives, which is the story of uh, Betty Ford, Michelle Obama, and uh, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt with Gillian Anderson and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and, oh my God, Viola Davis. It is awesome. Michael has not been watching that, as you can tell by the look on his face. It is a showtime it story. Fun. <laughs> it is awesome. Uh, Viola Davis has been getting uh, attacked for her portrayal of Michelle Obama. It is awesome. I love her portrayal of Michelle Obama. It's just uh, people are like, oh, you're not doing Michelle Obama correctly. And they're like, it's a fucking portrayal calm down move away from the scene like why no are they doing it as her a little more what like why is it not because she's they're doing it like this is the untold story right the behind the scenes story like the women behind the men and in the first few episodes michelle obama like says i don't want to be a trophy wife i don't want to be doing things i want to go in i want to actually have a policy that i can take care of 
and she gets in fights with her uh, um, like the chief of staff for Barack Obama, Rahm Emanuel. It is awesome. Awesome. And but like, go ahead. she definitely has said that before. She wanted that. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's just, they they have this picture of her, right? They have the picture of the gardening and all that. They didn't realize how much trouble. And she's a they, they talk about her being a mother and walking her kids to school with the media. And she's like, guys, I just want to go have a walk with my kids. Can I just do that? And the media is like, well, you're kind of a big person now. So I like it. I really, really, really like it. Um, the other one that I watched during the month of May, which we did not talk about, but we were talking about it last month, is Moon Knight, or as I like to call it, the six episode fucking show that should never have been made with Oscar Isaac because he is a horrible actor for the MCU and he just needs to walk away and never be cast in a film ever again. I'm done. I'm over him and he is dead to me. <laughs> Your opinion on Moon Knight? I enjoyed it. I mean, I don't know nothing about no comics like that. So I just, I enjoyed it. I it was know. a choice. I enjoyed it. I mean, I like the hippo lady, Tafrita. I liked her. Listen, the CGI in this was better than She-Hulk. Girl, I saw that and that is not like a oh, girl. Oh, she looked like a video game from the 2000s. I was like, um, we are in 2022, not 1990. What the fuck is going on here, Marvel? She looks like that video game, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stones, like the, on the PlayStation, the like really bad CGI, like choices. <laughs> no, that's not a choice. That is not a choice. That is a deliberate attempt to fuck over She-Hulk, attorney at large. I, I don't think it's a deliberate attempt. I think it's just bad. They're like, oh, yeah. we need to put this out in July or August. We need to put this out, so let's do it. Then we have Miss Marvel but they have... coming out. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, Miss Marvel's coming out. Yeah, and they did it with Sonic. Why can't you go back to the drawing board after Sonic's whole shit show? Let's just, Marvel, let's just stop for five minutes and just go back to the drawing board. Wait. Sonic, ugly Sonic, Rescue Rangers, the movie. Did you see it? I did not see Rescue Rangers. We're going to watch it tomorrow night, though. And this this Saturday. So tonight? Was, yes. No, I think we might actually watch it Thursday. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, awkward. <laughs> Um, no, but we will be doing uh, Chip, and, uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers on uh, Night of the Movie, so we'll have that probably in the month of May with Avatar, so please tune in. Um, what else was I watching? There was another show that I watched, and I was like, what the f- Like the Blue People Avatar? Yeah. Why? Because I need to get it on record of how much I despise that movie. How much James Cameron needs to not make any more. And the fact that two new ones are coming out bothers me to no extreme. But like, then I'm going to have to watch it because I don't remember enough of it. Can't we just watch Pocahontas and call it a day? Or Fern Gully. <laughs> or even Fern Gully. Anything but that. I'm how about we just watch? Really watch how about one. you watch Pocahontas? I'll watch Avatar, and we'll just do a movie review on Avatar with the the understanding that we're not talking about the movie Avatar, but we are the talking. Songs were gorgeous. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! When, <laughs> when James Cameron's choice to put Colors of the Wind into that movie, oh, I couldn't that? believe Mel Gibson was so popular. <laughs> Judy Kuhn's voice was gorgeous. 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 Um, <laughs> I... Well, uh, I'm just trying to remember the last movie, but I can't... The last TV show that I watched, and it was a good one, but I can't put up my finger on it right now. Oh. Oh. What the hell is it called? It's on Netflix, and I was not a fan of it, and that's how much of an opinion it left. Oh, it's their version of uh, 
uh, what's the HBO superhero thing? The comic book on HBO, The Boys? Oh, on Prime? On Prime, yeah. But Netflix tried to do it with uh, Josh Jamal. Jupiter Ascend- Jupiter Descending, Jupiter... Jupiter's Asc- Legacy? Legacy. We will- That's been a... Yeah, you, we, oh, you just watched that? Girl, I don't watch things once they come out because I need to know what the popular thing is so I don't do it, okay? Um, you would have probably saved yourself time. That movie, that TV show was garbage. It was. We got through the first episode and we're like, what the fudge did we just watch? Honestly. It was horrible. It was so bad. You're going to say it was so bad it was good, wasn't it? No. I just remembered another television program I watched this month. Which is? The Circle season four. Go it ahead. was, it's, okay, it's my favorite. I love it. I don't care. And the right person won. The right person won. It was a good season. First time for everything. Spice Girls were on it. I, I'm letting you talk. I'm just playing on my phone for five minutes. Rude. No, I'm done. I want to make it quick. Rude. Um, movies, anything new? Did you watch the new Doctor Strange movie? I did. I watched Wanda Maximoff in the Multiverse of Madness. I was not a fan. Um, it was a weaker entry. It was scary. It was kind of scary at points. Yeah, I was well, like, oh, Sam Raimi said that that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to go for the um, scary movie. Can we like discuss like a spoilery? moment here okay for anyone who wants to not learn about a spoiler what we're gonna do and this is gonna be a big like edit for me and this is gonna be oh my god there's gonna be a flash that says spoiler and then if you want to mute your intro about the doctor strange so mute your information and then at the end of the spoiler there'll be another sign that says spoiler and then you can turn the volume back up so Okay, spoiler, what's up? <laughs> She's not my villain. What? She might be your villain, Wanda's not my villain. I refuse what? to acknowledge, accept um, that she is the villain. Uh-uh. I, no, that's not Wanda, that, that's not my villain. Though I will say Elizabeth Olsen acting, gore just in this, but she's not the villain, she's not my villain. Everyone else was the villain, not Wanda. Not mine. I thought you were going to talk about Charlize Theron and her horrible acting and her horrible... No, thank you. I tried to forget she was there. I can't. And it bothers me to no extent because that's who Doctor Strange marries. I've come to bargain, Dormammu. Yeah. Um, Yeah, not my villain. And I wonder how they're going to revive and give her a, a redemption arc because if we gave Loki a fucking redemption arc, uh, my girl Wanda needs one. Thank you. Oh, they'll oh. find it's the multiverse. There's probably like twelve other Wandas out there. Um, no, I'm still on the spoiler alert. It was good to see uh, Patrick Stewart. He was so heavily teased. It was like nothing for me. I will say seeing John Krasinski was really cool. And yeah. I hope that that's to come for Fantastic Four with his wife. That's what I want. That's what I was hoping that the, the end trailer was going to be, but I guess it wasn't. Uh, being Seeing Black Bolt from the Unhumans from the ABC TV show was kind of cool as well. Seeing Peggy Carter. Was it cool or did we want to forget that that TV show existed? I thought it was cool. I thought it was a good throw. It, they, which now gets me a little concerned because now is Unhumans uh, like part of canon? Is uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. part of canon? So now I'm very, now I'm just very confused. Well, they are in a different multiverse. Well, so that means they're canon, but the way that yeah, it Yeah, they're like loose canon. Yeah. Um, and uh, Peggy Carter as Agent uh, Carter was awesome. Captain Carter, I mean, awesome. The actual live version. I was happy. Oh, good. Anyway, I guess I just real I just realized that we said uh, if you're watching this and spoiler flashes across the screen, that means we're done. But for those who are listening to this, which most of our audience does, they're not going to see that part. 
So I'm gonna have to introduce introduce like spoiler alert ahead. So no, I think you could say like spoiler because then you said like okay, what is it? Okay, okay, yeah, that's true. We'll go with you. Now, if you have any complaints, send it to entertainment at crossborderinterviews.ca, and I'll go to Michael directly. <laughs> Listen, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I like didn't do like serious spoiler. I also prefaced, can I talk about a spoiler moment? So anyone that's listening willingly allowed themselves to be spoiled because I that's fully true. prefaced it. That's true. Anyway, for the for the audience that's watching this, spoiler over. Um, okay. So I have one last movie I want to talk about, and then we're going to move a little bit forward. And it's not really a movie because we're probably not going to do a full length interview, uh, entertainment rundown in June because we're going to be off for a few months. We're, we're, we're shortening the series up in uh, June, July, and August. So Michael might not be in every month, but he might be from time to time on the night movies. Thor, God of Thunder, Thor, Love and Thunder. Um, are you excited for this? This is kind of the blockbuster of the summer, potentially. Are you looking forward to seeing Natalie Portman as Thor? Sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> eh, I don't know. I, I, I just like to go see, I love to go see a good movie. And You're not excited to I, see Chris Hemsworth's ass? Is it? Actually, we're gonna see his ass, or is it gonna be another cock tease like uh, Nightmare Alley gave me? Cock tease. Because like I wanted to see like full like Bradley Cooper, and I saw like half Bradley Cooper in a blink if you miss it moment. Uh, understandable. It's all good. Um, okay. So anything else you want to talk about movies or TV shows before we go into our last segment here? Oh, are we going to do the movie we both watched last night? Or are oh, we going to shit. spoiler I, I can, No, let's not spoil oh, it. I'll, I'll spoil that one. I will spoil heavily that one. I mean, it's, I'm gonna a bad tell movie everybody. is a bad movie. <laughs> exactly. So uh, two nights ago <laughs> on Monday the 30th, not last night, <laughs> the continuity okay. of this multiverse is not going well on this we're in the show. multiverse of what the fuck is happening exactly we we come prepared to some of these shows people but some of these shows we just do it off of a whim and i can tell you i texted michael monday and said you free tomorrow he said sure and i said okay and then two minutes before we started recording i said what are we talking about he said i don't know and i said awesome I didn't even think you asked me that. I think it was just, uh, I'm here, let's go. And then you came up and you're like, so what happened this month? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. Uh, so last night, or Monday night, uh, uh, HBO Max and Craven Canada released I don't even know the name of the movie. That's how bad it is. Uh, Fantastic Beast to the Where is Secrets of Gay Dumbledore is. Uh, Fantastic Beasts and the The Secret of Dumbledore. What is it called? The Dumbledore is it called Se- Fantastic Beasts, The Secret of Dumbledore? There's no yeah. where to find them. Where to find gay Dumbledore. <laughs> Fantastic Beasts and where is Dumbledore's glory hole? Pretty much. And he's a he's a vampire in this one because he carries blood around on him. No, it's his unbreakable vow. It's blood. <laughs> well, yes, but it's the unbreakable vow. It's blood. I feel like like Bella from Twilight should have walked up like, uh, vampires. No, no. So no, how did you no, like no. Uh, Fantastic Beast and the Glory Hole of Secrets of Dumbledore? <laughs> this is the third installment. This is so just serendipitous here serendipitous so we all remember johnny depp from the very first 10 minutes of our show we were talking about uh when amber heard that uh, accused johnny depp of being uh uh assaulting her um jk rowling which totally has a leg to stand on on anything that's controversial decided that she was gonna fire johnny depp from grindelwald's uh position and put in someone who played Hannibal Lecter on the show Hannibal into the role as well. Um, 
So Johnny Depp was in the first two movies. Well, he was in like two minutes of the first movie, and then he was in uh, the entire second movie. Yeah. He was not in this movie. Uh, Jude Law basically became the ca- main character in this movie of after Newt Scout. Did he know? I found so. I didn't think he was in it like at all. I found I was more him. Anyway, no, what did you think about the movie? Oh, boring. What did it do? It literally did nothing. It literally was like, uh, if we don't get the other two movies, this is how we can end. But we also set it up for more. It literally did absolutely nothing. It set just a bunch of stuff up for maybe we can do more, maybe not. It was just, the action was boring. The plot was boring. It was predictable. It really just... (laughs) I didn't like it. So I will be the first to admit I despised the movie. I gave it like a two out of five if that was a possibility if we were doing that mo- Night of the Movies. My husband, though, gave it a 10 out of 10. He loved it. He enjoyed it. He thought it was cute. He thought the the only part that he didn't like is when Grindelwald, spoiler alert, but not spoiler alert, killed the little bambi looking offspring and he goes mushu which is one of our dog's names so that's the only part that he didn't like but overall he liked the movie and i was like how did you like that movie it was horrible horrid it was uh, uh, did, did jonathan like it i don't i don't know we didn't it, really like talk said, after it it didn't go anywhere. There was no part of the movie when I went, oh, that could be an interesting take on what's going next. And spoiler alert, and I'm not, I'm not actually, no, no spoiler alert, because I need you to be prepared for this. Whoever thought that, oh, we're going to try and have this double agent become a triple agent, become a four-time agent, and the I was like, we all know he's going to turn back and be part of the team. Don't try to fake us by saying, oh, look, he's part of the bad team now. Um, I will say, and this is where the controversy might happen, Mads Mikkelsen was a better Grindelwald. I can't remember. I, I haven't Johnny liked the Depp. series. I haven't liked the series to begin with. I liked the very first movie a lot. And then the second movie was okay. And then it's like, it's just getting progressively worse. I feel like as a standalone movie, the first one was, was fun. It was a good time. And then it just, like, I feel like each one is just getting more and more, like, unnecessary. The call is coming from inside the room. It's just bad. Bad. Horrible. <laughs> My favorite quote. What? Calls coming from inside the room. Red room, red room. I've literally been saying that the homophobia is coming from inside the house all the time. All day today because it's June 1st. Exactly. (laughs) Don't be problematic this month, people. Michael will come for you. I, I, uh uh-huh. I'll fight. Okay, uh, so we just talked about, uh, so we don't even have to do that for Night of the Movies. The fantastic glory holes and the secrets of the fantastic beasts and the bears of the Dumbledores. So. Yeah, if you can help it, don't give her your money. It's just not worth it. No, very transphobic. Just don't. Especially on this the high holiest day of uh, Pride. <laughs> yeah, it really is just not worth it. So we'll be right back after this brief message and we'll be talking about the two biggest news stories here in Canada. and Well, one of the biggest news stories here in Canada and then down in the States, a show that we talk about too much on the show, but why not? We got to talk about a little bit more. And that is right after this quick brief message. Calgary, Edmonton, Vegreville, St. Albert, Drumheller, Medicine Hat, Fort McMurray, and Peace River. These are some of the communities this show has been heard in. By advertising with us, your advert will be heard by countless Albertans and Canadians. Visit the link in the show notes to advertise with us today. Welcome back after that great commercial break and 
if you haven't already, go do the thing that I've randomly put in there to do because that would help us out with the algorithm. I don't know which one the third one's going to be, but just do what it does and do what it says. And if you haven't already, give us a, give us a like on Spotify. Go give us a like. Give us like a five-star rating. Don't give us anything less than five. If you give us less than five, I will hunt you down. And I know where you live. I don't. No, you I, don't. I could find out where you live. <laughs> no, you can't. No, but that would take time. So I will send, I no. will, <laughs> I will be cry in your sleep. Disgusted. You will cry in your sleep. I will be crying in my sleep tonight. So unless you want to be the guy who causes the guy who has cancer to cry in his sleep. Wow. <laughs> wow. Journey. Okay. Michael, let's start off with one of the biggest things that's happening in Canada, and you have mentioned it, but you didn't know that it was happening probably because you're an American, and you guys got rid of the Queen while we love the Queen, and that is the Platinum Jubilee, Miss Queen Elizabeth, 70 years on the throne as of this week. God save the queen, 70 years. You mentioned the fact at the top of the hour before we started recording that she is no longer going to be living in Windsor Castle. That's because Buckingham. she wants to, Buckingham uh, Castle, Buckingham Palace, sorry, because she wants to be closer to the Duke of Edinburgh uh, in Windsor. Is it Windsor? Yeah, Windsor. Um, this is kind of big. This is uh, for someone, for a, a monarchist, which I am. God save the queen. I am happy that she she has ties to her husband and she wants to be close to him because they've never been far apart. So good for her. That's all you wanted to say, literally. That's, that. I mean... <laughs> Do, do you like the monarchy? It's interesting. Is the, I, I mean... Go ahead. What? <laughs> Go ahead. So what? Oh, I mean, you. We both know that you and I have gotten into disagreements over me being Team Meghan Markle and you being Team anyone but Meghan Markle. Um, I'm not Team anyone uh, but Meghan Markle. I'm just not. I'm not on Team Meghan Markle and Harry. Harry and Meghan, like, I want to break up from the family, but I want to keep my allowance. They're having net Netflix woes right now. I know, thank God. I love You're that so <laughs> shady. So I'm, shady. I'm sorry. Am I like I'm sorry, but just Poor because she, just because oh why? She did you watch did suits? Need... Did you actually watch suits? No, I don't watch <laughs> the USA. I watched Law and Order SVU on the USA because Mariska Hargitay is the queen. And um What's his name? Christopher Maloney has an ass that don't quit. Uh, him and Oz was awesome. I just love Christopher. Christopher Maloney. Um, yeah, I was, I, was, I was totally broken up by the fact that all Archibald or Archie Media Empire got canceled via Netflix. <sighs> um, wow. I just, I don't know. I'm. Hey, it's, Michelle it's, Obama it's, and Barack Obama got canceled by Spotify this month, too. So it's just one of those things that it's interesting to hear, to kind of see and experience like that she's never going to see the inside of Buckingham Palace again. Well, she's, got, she's, she's there right now. She's not going to stay. Well, I know, but once she leaves, once she leaves, she's never going to see it again. They, that's everything says she's going to live out the rest of her days at Windsor and she's never going to step foot. That's what we've been getting in the U.S. is that she's never, once she leaves Buckingham, she's never going back. It's fascinating that it's literally going to probably sit unused for a few more, for a little while. A few, a few more, more years, years, maybe even longer. Her mom was 102 when she passed away and she's only 94. She's got another seven yeah. years. She is trying to outlive like, Charles. <laughs> for real and fucking Camilla. I don't like that bitch. Um, what did she ever do to you? She killed Diana. I'm sorry. To the people of Canada who are listening to this right now, our future queen is under attack. Please send your donations to crossborderinterviews.ca. You, you snake. <laughs> you snake. And you can help us save our loyal queen. May she reign in peace and prosperity. 
God save. You also don't want her. I do. I'm okay with it. You don't want Kate? We'll get Kate. I'm okay with it. I'm... That's what monarchies do. You don't get to choose. It automatically goes down. Well, I was also like listening to how many and reading about how many rooms are in there. You know how many affordable housing places you can put in Buckingham Palace? You can house a lot of folks. You can. I just don't feel the need for a monarch. Do that with the White House as well. I'm down for it. You could do that with Camp David. I don't know what that is. How do I know what Camp David is? And you, an American who lives in New York, does not know what Camp David is. Hold on. I'm Googling it. Oh, military base down. Do it. It's not a military base. It's the White House. It's the presidential... uh, uh like oh retreat it's his cottage even better down oh i did know camp david is why am it's just people it is hot here and i am my so, brain is all over the place <laughs> the mascara is running if you're not watching this the call is coming from inside the house exactly um so with that i want to talk about the last subject that we we have to get on the table here and we try not to talk about actually our second last subject because there's one that I want to talk about as well. We're not talking about Jason Derulo. Jason Derulo. You do realize every time you say that, his name actually has to be sung, right? Like you can't just randomly say it and not be sung. So, <sighs> um, my last job, my second last conversation is one of the biggest uh, reality shows, the longest it seems like, fucking, or the one that has more spinoffs than anything right now. Miss RuPaul Charles has uh, all st- uh, RuPaul's All Stars. Okay, I need to get this name right because it's a very long winded name. RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars season seven, all winter season is out. We have seen three episodes already being released. This is past winners coming onto the show and doing it for two hundred thousand dollars. Um, Michael, I will give my brief recap of what I think after you give yours. So what, what is your thoughts on season seven, all winter seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race? <laughs> I mean, I really am liking it. I think that the big thing to also acknowledge here is that when now, whenever a queen says that editing ruined their, um, like snatch game or their performance or they did a fine job and then editing fucked them over you can kind of believe them because there are some queens that are bombing that editing is like fully supporting them like snatch game nobody did overwhelmingly tragic and there were some ones that like were there were some bad ones but like they I still had the good was that good uh i'm also talking about rico nasty we saw that exactly one time Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The one time that it was funny, we yeah. saw that. Like, there was a lot of, like, editing, working on overdrive to make sure everyone looked good. Also, the prince. And we saw Lady Chablis exactly once, really, also. Like, they were... I think we can really acknowledge that also this might be the superior all-stars format, because then every queen gets to be there the whole time, show their talent show everything i don't necessarily like the send the bitches home and i like that it's like seven not a whole like 12 uh girls on the show in the all-stars it's here's eight or however many nine eight 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 here's eight they're gonna be with you for 10 episodes they're gonna do this legacy star which i found very the legendary stupid. legend star that's only awarded to legendary legends because they're legendary legends unless you have the um, legendary plunger and then you cannot get the legendary legend um you star mean the platinum the, plunger that the platinum gold. plunger that's and then gold. the platinum plunger that doesn't have any secret things but shay Goulet says it has just that things and then trinity the text like oh my god i do know what you're talking about but i don't actually know what you're talking about and then trinity's, it's like oh my god that was the greatest that was so great she's like girl i'm just gonna go along with it because it's fucking with people and i'm like yes queen so we are three episodes in as it's changed the name it has been very heavily acting for the first two episodes 
Uh, well, the reading yeah, challenge. With the wrapping. The they wrapping. did the wrapping. Yeah, but you had to and act then they a little did the bit snatch. There. And then, and the then snatch. they did the sewing. And then the sewing. Um, any odds on favorites right now? You know my girl, Mame. Yeah, I don't. I don't think she's playing a good social game. She is, and I don't like that. I like Jinx. Jinx is my favorite. She is, she's, she's my, she's my little girl. She's my little redhead. She's like, how are you? How are you doing? I do like Jinx. I also really like Raja. Yep. I think Raja's being uh, underserved, and that's pissing me off right now. Like, she could have won easily any one of those three challenges. Like, Uh what's going on with Raja, and why isn't RuPaul liking Raja? Because even when they go to the judges, and like, who was the best? They're like, oh, Raja was great. Raja did amazing. And I'm like, oh, Raja's going to be top. And she's like, nope, I'm going to choose who I like. They said Raja's gold look was the best constructed for the yeah. like one they did there. And her first look, which was the Vanna White realness, was perfect. Like she had the best constructed look. She had the best Vanna White look. And then she had a really awful middle look because there was no John Waters in that Olivia Newton John Waters. There was, but you could hardly see it. It wasn't enough. And yeah. so like she lost it because of that even though having two of the three looks were the best looks of the night that makes no sense considering that the other two who actually won that episode trinity the tuck and uh jada Essence. essence hall had shitty looks as well which one trinity's was shitty i just think i didn't like trinity's uh uh before and after look you didn't like RuPaul Charles II? I liked it. it I thought it was happen. clever. To me, to me, it had nothing RuPaul. I was like, okay, Hair. I'm watching. Yeah, but... I don't know. It, I, it was clever enough where I'm like, okay, girl. And then... And Jada, Jada was Essie. Jada's? Was Jada the B. Arthur? Cardi B. Arthur? No, that was Evie Oddly. Mm. No, Jada had that black look on that she constructed oh. the shoulders. And then she had the bag lady in red. And then she had the Vanna White that was that really pretty, like, white. Guy. Jada did a very, Jada's looks were good. She would have been top two regardless. But I think it should have been Raja with her, not Trinity. Roger. It should have been Roger. Oh, Roger. Oh, Roger. Oh, Roger. Um, but it is what it is, and I can't do anything about that. Um <sighs> It's I I know you said you like the social aspect of the game now because they're not sending them home. I just don't like I love the fact that uh Trinity the Tuck fucked over uh Monet by saying, Hey, we're in an alliance. Do you want to be in an alliance? And everyone's like, they're in an alliance. <laughs> like that they're they're in an alliance, guys. Like Shea Coulet was like, hey Jada, they're in an alliance. They want to know. It's like good for them. Well, they, Monet and and Trinity were trying to bring people in and like, sure, nobody wanted to, in, but nobody <laughs> wants to do the alliance thing because it's like, yeah, what if later on I need to block you because you're winning? Yeah. But like Monet is flying under the radar and it's great. I think she's going to be blocked next week. I, I don't think so. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. Uh-huh. I'm sticking to it. Um, so uh-huh. let's- Again, we are slowing down on these. These are these are not two hour longs anymore. So that's because there hasn't been that much going on I during during award seasons. We can do that. We can do longer episodes. This is just like sh- like shitty like blockbuster seasons can be a little bit easier. But anyway, um, so with that, Michael Nichols Pate, our entertainment producer, entertainment pundit, our associate producer. The man in New York State. The man with knowledge of all things movies. Thank you for coming on the show once again. It has been an honor and a pleasure to have you inside the actor's studio. I don't like this voice. You don't like anything. Wow. Oh! oh, I do like things. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Hold on, hold on. Back it up. Surprise! We forgot one more segment. 
I'd like to take a moment and acknowledge the people we've lost in the last month as well. We have not done this since January, but I just want to make a, make a mention of the people who we've, who we've lost socially for being canceled. The first being Kevin Spacey, yet again, being canceled after being coming back and then being canceled by having his sexual uh, assault uh, charges being uh, uh, put onto him or however you want to put that, or charges laid against him for sexual assault of minors in England. We won't miss you, Kevin Spacey. I won't remember you so. And the other one is, well, he hasn't been officially canceled. He has lost his job. And Michael's the one who actually brought his attention to me. And this is Mr. Will Schuster himself. Matthew Morrison was kicked off of So You Think You Can Dance. Michael, can you talk to me about the long and forgotten Matthew Morrison? Allegedly, they have come forward and said that he was unable to do his job by breaking protocol. Um, so he could not be a fair judge. I want to know who he was sleeping with on the panel because that's the or of the contestants because that's the only thing I can think of that they would pull him off. Um, also, another cancellation: Ooh, John what? Mulaney. What? what? Really? What happened? Yeah, there? he's been touring. He's been touring with good old Dave Chappelle and bringing him out for pop-up stuff and. Not during this Pride Month will I allow that to happen. John Mulaney, we don't remember you so, even though we're about to watch a movie tonight with you in it. What movie? He was in Chip and... Da Chip and... Oh, yeah. It's a good movie. Yeah. So He's problematic, but... I, I want to acknowledge our fallen soldiers and say... <clears throat> Good riddance, we do not miss you. I will remember you. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> so with that, <laughs> that was a journey. I want to thank everyone for tuning into the cross border interviews with Chris Brown and Michael Nichols Tate on the entertainment rundown for June first. Have yourself an excellent day, guys. Remember, get out from behind that social media feed and just have a conversation with somebody or not. Don't listen to me; it doesn't bother me. As long as you're listening to this, we get our hits anyway. That's all that matters. So with that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, guys, see you tomorrow.